We're talking renewables now with London-listed Bluefield Solar Income Fund, which is a renewable sector specialist infrastructure fund focused in on UK solar energy assets. James Armstrong is a founder of Bluefield Partners, which is an investment advisor uh, to the Income Fund. James, good to talk to you. Good to talk to you, James. Why solar to begin with? Well, I think there's been a, there's a, at the moment we're going through a major energy transition and this has been facilitated um, historically through government intervention. And so um, five years ago, we listed the Bluefield Solar Income Fund on the main market, um, which as you say, is a, is a solar focused investment company. And we invested it for, um, we set the business up for the purpose of delivering stable income to investors. And the reason um, solar is a great uh, asset class for delivering income is that the energy source is very stable. It uh, comes on in the morning, goes off at night. The technology to generate the electricity is very old and proven and stable and therefore what comes out is a very predictable stream of uh, energy. If you match that to the fact that the government had um, incentivized the sector by introducing um, regulated revenues which meant you had guaranteed uh, offtake for 20 years RPI linked it's been a very, very attractive product for income seekers um, since we, we launched the company. So when you say regulated income, what is that precisely in the context of what is a subsidised, government subsidised area? Yeah, OK, so, so renewables were, have been backed uh, through a uh, subsidy which was called the Renewable Obligation scheme uh, and you were entitled to, depending on when your asset, your solar farm was grid connected, you were entitled to, to a certain level of remuneration which was for 20 years from the date of installation and it was it's index linked so it rises with RPI every year. You're then entitled because we're producing a commodity electricity on top of that we're also we sell the power um, to um, to the grid and that makes up our revenue stream. So when you look at when you look at the Bluefield um, solar revenue streams about 60% of the revenues come from the subsidies and about 40% come from selling power. So what you have when you have a very stable cost base which these assets are, are very predictable, very stable, um, you have the ability to produce very very forecastable uh, revenues, as I say, and that translates for our shareholders into very attractive levels of income. Mm. And just to be clear, uh, we've both mentioned the words renewables, but you're talking here just solar. You're not going to verge into wind or any other form of renewable energy. No, we're very we're very pure play, and there's there's a reason for that. So we are single technology, so solar, and we're also single country. We're just UK, and the reason for that is, and we've we've delivered. I mean, in the in the five years since IPO, we've delivered in excess of 50 percent on a total return basis to our shareholders. So for a very defensive income product, that's been pretty, it's been a pretty good run um, so far, and there's more to come for us on that. Um, but the reason for that, we think, is first of all, is that solar, unlike other renewables, and this is, uh, there's no criticism of other renewables, but solar is the simplest and the most predictable. Therefore, again, when you're going back to basics of what you're trying to do, which is it's a sterling income fund, that's a good place to start, where you have the simplest, most predictable technology. Again, you know, the clue is in the fact that it's a sterling income fund. We think, in terms of on a risk reward basis, uh, the focus on having UK assets producing uh, sterling income is where we want to stay. And we, we have no expectation of changing the mandate because obviously the success um, has been very strong in the past five years. When, when the regulated um, uh, part of the business ultimately dries up, which of course in yep. a couple of decades it will do, um, will that change anything substantially for you? No, the model is actually, that, again, the model is very conservative in terms of the return expectations for the investors over the life of the asset assume a terminal value of zero actually in year 25. So basically you're essentially saying that for just for five years after the end of the regulated revenues you sell some power. So it's a very defensive uh, assumption to have. What we expect is actually for the assets to be able to run on beyond that. Um, because solar farms will run for you know, 30 or 40 years. So assuming you have the right planning in place, um, we expect there to be more of a tail actually. But there's no, you know, again, going back to the fundamentals for people, we look at this as, as, a, as an asset class which over the, the medium to long term is a very, very good way of getting index linked revenue. Um, and, and as someone that uses a lot of roads around the UK, am I right in saying that you're talking here about these large agricultural fields yep. full of the the panels facing towards the sun this is what you're investing facing in. south yeah indeed yeah, yeah. <laughs> facing <laughs> south yeah the, the risk um, potentially then is that if the land prices rise the agricultural value of land rises past that that gives you the return on 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 the solar side is the risk not there after that the 
owner of that land yep. wants to return it to its original use. Well, certainly. I mean, and, and that's just that's a negotiation between um, ourselves and the, and the landowner. So what we obviously have in place are leases which uh, are in place for 25 years, so for the life that we have articulated to our shareholders. Um, and, and, and therefore, really, then it's just a discussion as to whether the farmer would want to have a lease extension beyond that year 25. But we have everything in place to run the, the first phase, which is for the next you know, 25 years or so. Yeah, because you've got a lot of visibility at least. A lot of visibility, yeah. Um, what's your fund strategy? So the, the strategy has, I mean, it's, we have kept it unchanged since IPA. So we, we have, um, it's partly, you know, reflects how well the, the sort of the, the fund has been received in the last five years, is that we set out with um, a, a mandate and a strategy to look at, as we said, UK-based solar assets. And we have not changed that. We said the focus is to deliver income, and we have delivered index-linked uh, dividends, um, which are growing with RPI every year, uh, since IPO in 2013. And so the strategy has been historically has been obviously to, to buy uh, assets which have got these very attractive subsidies attached to them. At the moment we are focusing very heavily on optimising the current portfolio um, and making sure we can maximise the income we can for shareholders. So we delivered um, for the period ending June um, uh, 2018 we delivered um, a covered dividend after paying down debt of 7. Um, uh, four eight pence per share, that's going to rise uh, in the current financial year to seven point six eight pence per share. That's the strategy. Yeah, we've stuck to the strategy, which is to del deliver what is now, I think, the highest um, uh, income in the infrastructure space on the listed markets. So that that's unchanged. Going forward, uh, we are looking at the non-subsidised uh, market. So there's been a very well documented, and, and you would. Um, people are becoming more and more familiar with renewables. One of the biggest drivers in the renewables, renewables globally has been the cost reduction in solar. So it's been a very significant uh, reduction. I've been in the solar industry for 11 years and uh, installed cost has come down by about 90%, 90%. So it's been an incredible change, driven largely by China and the unit cost of the installations coming down. What that means is around the world, um, unsubsidised solar is starting to be built and that is something we're looking at very closely in the UK. In the UK we're not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. It's happening in Spain, it's happening in Italy, um, it's not happening so far in, in, in the UK because it's obviously slightly more a northerly climb but it's, it's very, very imminent and we would expect to look at that and be involved in that as we go forward. So that will be the, the key focus for us as we look to build the company beyond its current half a billion um, market cap. And you're going to go beyond our shores as well? We will do, but we're not expecting to within this, this vehicle. And I think that's exactly what our shareholders uh, want um, us to do, is to stick with the mandate. It's a sterling income fund, <coughs> and therefore let's, um, we're keeping the, the asset base in the UK. You mentioned the 7.43 pence per share dividend that you pay. If we look at the share price, interestingly, you can see over the longer period it's, uh, it's risen uh, relatively substantially. There was yeah. a little bit of a, a dip uh, going into the beginning of 2016 and so forth. Uh, what does this represent, the share price? at the moment? Yeah, it's a good question. So, I mean, the dip was driven really through sentiment. So uh, the renewable sector you have, uh, and the Bluefield Solar Fund has around about 40% of its revenues come from the sale of electricity. And you will recall that there was a fairly torrid time for the energy markets from uh, so 20, the end of 2013 through to the first half of 2016, where the, the gas market in terms of uh, pricing pretty much halved. And so we were caught up in that because obviously we were seeing the energy that we were, uh, the contracted energy we were selling, uh, the prices for the power purchase agreements was lower. So that uh, across the renewable sector, you saw a tear down in terms of um, uh, share prices. Since that point, sentiment has changed completely. Also, obviously, you've seen that there's been fairly significant energy price inflation as well. So we have been the beneficiaries of that. So that's part of the reason. The other reason for such a big move is that we have a, a proven thesis. Uh, you've got to remember, in 2013, we were the first of the first um, uh, solar fund anywhere to list on, on a main market into the and, and certainly the first on the London market. And it was a relatively seen any that this is a kind of a new, uh, a new asset class. And since then, there's been a number of entrants. And Bluefield has been very successful in executing strategy. And so what we're getting is you're getting, obviously, a lot of support from investors because they can see this proven thesis year in, year out of delivering covered income, highly attractive 
uh, income levels and also RPI linked income uh, and that's obviously driving the share price. Mm. Um, at these levels or the last reported levels what does that yield? So it yields uh, in excess of um, six uh, six percent. It's been sort of six point three uh, percent of the dividend. So it's, which is again, it, we think is still remains very attractive relative to other asset classes. Um, when you consider the the low volatility of the revenues of the asset class um, you of the portfolio, you've got the fixed cost base. It you know it looks like a, an attractive yield even today. Mm. Uh, how are things going to develop? Just steady as she goes. Well, very much, you know, our day job is to maximise income for our shareholders. There's an enormous focus on making sure the portfolio keeps on uh, producing uh, and working very, very well for the shareholders. And then the next phase, as we've mentioned, Jeremy, is, you know, we are very excited about the non-subsidised world. And we're going to look at that as a big, it's a big uh, project for us, and we will look at that on behalf of our shareholders. And if that market is uh, attractive and if it works, then it's obviously something which is tailor-made for Bluefield to look at. Um, but if not, we've got a fantastic business which is um, generating very, very attractive income for our shareholders. Yeah. Well, it's a pleasure, James. Thanks indeed uh, for dropping by uh, with an update on the uh, Bluefield uh, Solar Income Fund. That's James Armstrong, a founder of Bluefield Partners, which is an investment advisor to the fund.